Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to Growing Together, uh, one of the segments of our uh, communication and production team. So thank you for joining us. Um, and again, if you are new, uh, one of the things that we uh, often do in this segment is we just take a little deeper dive into what our teaching team had uh, spoken about in the weekend services. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Brian Cuck, lead pastor at GT, and um, which many of you listening know. But on this past weekend, I spoke, we're obviously in a series right now called Do Unto Others. Um, we talked about it being the, the discipline of giving, of giving to others, of actionable, doing to others, not just thinking, not just thoughts, but really doing unto others and treating them the way we would want to be treated. Uh, and obviously, we've taken that thought from the words of Jesus, the, the golden rule, which many people know, um, from Matthew uh, 7, 12. But uh, I've been speaking, the two weeks I spoke about give love, uh, in fact, uh, Scott Kramer also talked about that in the Give Honor message. And this Sunday, I went back to Romans 12, 12. And the one verse that I spoke about this week that I kind of focused uh, the main teaching on was Romans 12, 12. And it says this, Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. And so we... Uh, talked obviously about give hope and uh, what does that look like in the context of this verse. So I thought in this segment we would take a little deeper dive into some of the things that I talked about uh, in regard to Romans 12 in general, kind of the summary and the context. And I, I feel it's important for all of this kind of teaching, whether it's giving love, giving honor, um, or obviously as we talked this week about give hope. Uh, but Paul talks about, I mentioned it this weekend, Paul talks about the fact that um, when you start Romans 12, 1, you know that we, his, our worship of God is to be geared around becoming a living sacrifice. Now, obviously, that's an allusion to the Old Testament where they would, uh, you know, perform sacrifices and it had to be a blood sacrifice. And that goes all the way back to Genesis in the beginning with Cain and Abel. But I talked a little bit about this weekend, what does it mean to be a living sacrifice? And essentially what I said is when you're a living sacrifice, you get to the point where it's kind of like Isaac on the altar. You're there, you're, you're out of control, you're, you're a sacrifice. And so as free moral agents for us, um, it's really, I think the key is that it's, it's no longer living life just focused on what I want out of life. I want to be this, I want to do that. I want to accomplish this, I want to do that. Uh, it really now becomes knowing God and knowing what God wants to accomplish and saying, you know what, I'm going to be a part of that. And so uh, one of the things I mentioned right out of the gate uh, in that context, and it's mentioned in verse 6, Romans 6, A literally would say, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Um, and that is talking about um, spiritual gifts. And I made the allusion to it. One of the easiest ways in my mind over my years of studying the Bible that we can memorize gifts, um, I, I call it the three M's. So Romans 12, six through eight, something like that, talk about the ministry gifts. It's doing ministry, prophesying, teaching, giving, uh, leadership, all right? The manifestational gifts, these are, some refer to them as the power gifts. Um, you know, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, working of miracles, the gift of discernment, speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues, words of knowledge. You can do a lot of good reading in 1 Corinthians 12 on the manifestational gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then the other M would be ministry gifts, manifestational gifts, and then in Ephesians 4, it talks about equipping the body of Christ, and those who do that are those that have motivational gifts. That's the term that, that I've used over the years, and it's the apostolic, prophetic, uh, evangelistic, pastoral, and teaching gifts. And, uh, and I've said this too over many years. You know, people that lead small groups and are in ministry, they many times have a pastoral gifting, certainly a teaching gifting. And so, I said this, and so I appreciate you joining us uh, on this, this um, episode and teaching. 
Um, I think one of the big things you should do uh, if you haven't already done it is you need to identify and use your spiritual gifts. Um, at GT, uh, obviously some of our serve coaching and the things that we do, getting people involved in ministry, you know, we have five purposes at GT, which is to reach, connect, serve, follow, lead. And we, when people serve at GT, we don't just them serving out of need or, oh, GT needs this and, oh, I got to help because no one else is helping. We want you to serve, number one, out of your passion and out of your gifting. In fact, for years, we talked about shape. Uh, that we're shaped by God to serve him in specific ways. And the, the acrostic of shape, uh, obviously, is spiritual gift, heart, H, or passion. A is abilities, P, personality, and E are our personal experiences, okay? And so I would really encourage you to take some next steps. You know, um, there's some good books out there on spiritual gifts. You obviously can sit and talk. Really, what I've done, what we've done with it over the years, it's more of a discovery. It's like, well, how has God used me? What have I been involved in? What am I passionate about? And so I would strongly encourage you, our serve booth at GT, you could connect with Kim Geddes um, through GT and talk to her about it. I know she's done a lot of work with this over the years too. And so uh, I think that is uh, a big part of what I wanted to talk with you about tonight uh, or in this segment today, whenever you're listening to it. And so um, one of the things I said Sunday, too, is that we want God to empower us uh, to give people hope. And then he goes in those verses following the, the reference in Romans 12, kind of six through eight. Um, he gives a, kind of an outline of what the gifts are, and we each have been given different gifts by God to serve each other. Uh, then he goes into this list of brief, short commands in Romans 12, uh, 9 through 21, and that's where we were kind of looking at that. And I actually made the reference in the message, like, uh, you know, in, in verses 1 through 8, he kind of paints this picture. It's this kind of this broad brush uh, painting. And then when he goes from nine through 21, it's more detailed. It's kind of more of the shading and the, the detail of that painting. And really, as I shared it on, on Sunday, you know, you're painting and you're working, you don't know how it's going to look, but one day that picture is complete. And I reference that in relationship to our life. Um, something for me, and as you dig into the word, you know, all the years I've been studying the Bible, uh, to me, I'm just blown away uh, when you're in the Bible and you're reading it, you're studying it, like things that just come to you in, in a new way. Now, I've studied, um, you know, First Corinthians and Romans for so many years, Bible college, master's classes and those kind of things. But this week is the first time of how much I noticed that in Romans 12, verses 6 through 8, he's talking, Paul's talking to the Romans about gifts. These are the ministry gifts. And then in Romans 12, the verses right after that, verses 9 through 21, he's talking about basically love. And this is how we treat each other. This is how we're to do unto others. And this is how we're to care for one another. And I, I just thought of the symmetry of that, the same way he does that in Romans 12, 6 through 8 with gifts and Romans 9, uh, Romans 12, 9 through 21 in Romans, how the gifts and love and have to work together. He does the same type of illustration when he writes the epistle or letter to the Corinthian church, and he talks to them about the manifestational gifts, okay? Um, you know, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, you know, healings, miracles, all those powerful manifestational gifts, okay? Then he gets in Romans, um, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 13, and talks about, hey, I can move mountains and I can do all these things, but if I don't have love, uh, then it's, it's all meaningless. And so he takes these giftings in Romans 12 and list, you know, combines that with the verses in Romans 9 through 21. The same way in 1 Corinthians, he takes chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians 13 and brings those together. And so I guess my whole point in saying that is, it doesn't matter how gifted you are. You could have every spiritual gift there is, and if you don't love people and you don't treat them well, and you're not humble and you're not really, um, you know, living the life that Christ wants you to live, then uh, all the gifting and ability and all that intelligence really doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, you know, as I'm as I'm even talking about that, I, I'm thinking about what our team right now, our, our staff is is reading, 
and we're reading a, a, a book. It's probably an author. It's not a modern day author. It's uh, by Andrew Murray. It's a book called Humility. And it's not, an, it's not an easy read. It's a thin book, as you can see. But, but Andrew Murray is kind of this deep thinker and really uh, getting people to think about how they live and serve. And, and he talks in that book about how vital humility is. I mean, certainly loving people is uh, critical. And that's what Paul's talking about in Romans in our talk about tonight. But then, you know, just living hu uh, with humility and saying, you know what? I don't know it all. I'm not... I'm not the, the smartest, I'm not the best, and I'm just, I'm, I wanna listen, I wanna be a good listener. And so let me encourage you tonight, even as you're listening to this or whenever you are listening to it, we, one of the great things, we need to be self-aware. So when we talk about giving love, giving honor, giving hope, uh, we're gonna be talking in the future about giving kindness and giving grace. We need to be self-aware of our lives to say, do I really do that? It's not the way I carry myself. Uh, we've talked many times over the years, even just about our facial expressions. Like, you know, you can say something, but the look on your face says so much. I mean, you think about it right now, what's going on in our whole culture, you know, quarantine, and we're using Zoom, and people are looking at maybe 10 faces on a screen. When someone says something, how am I reacting? Am I smiling? Uh, I need to be self-aware. You know, I, one of the things I used to always joke about, like, Think about, uh, and maybe in how, if you're doing this in a group or a session, you can talk about how do you answer the phone? I've, I've had the illustration that many times, I've known people over the years that it doesn't mean that they are, but they answer the phone, the phone they sound mad. It just becomes this habit, this ritual, this routine. The phone rings and you might say, hello, or hello, or hello. You know, think of, think of all the different ways you could say hello. Um, and so being self-aware of the way we carry ourselves, the way we walk in humility, we walk in love. Uh, and I said something on Sunday that, you know, we can't uh, give hope if we're not possessing hope. And so Paul tells them, rejoice in our confident hope. And so we, we need to be confident that the hope that God gives us is a, a very powerful thing. I, I use the term, the Greek word, el peace, which is a Greek phrase uh, excuse me, it's a Greek word that translates to a English phrase of confident hope. And I mentioned something Sunday is that we, we don't often want, we, we don't want to be challenged in our feelings. And I, I read the reference from James 1, 2 that, you know, dear brothers and sisters, when you're, when uh, trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity uh, to give great joy. Uh, you know, when, when the scripture tells us how we should feel and think and, and how we should respond and not curse our enemies, but love them and pray for them. Uh, and again, as I, I think this is really important, something I said, and maybe you can talk about it in your group, is um, this isn't a command that you have to be happy, all right? But I think something we do have to have as followers of Jesus Christ in the good, the bad, the ugly, the response, the way people treat us, we have to have perspective on our situation. And not just perspective, but the right perspective, the God perspective, okay, of our, our situation. And so um, I, I hope that as you listen to this, that uh, again, a big part when you're studying the Bible is getting the context. It's not just the old promise box where you just read the promise, read the context, read the verses, sometimes the chapter before the verses that you're reading, and it gives insight, just like you'd be reading a letter. You wouldn't just read one certain, two sentences from a letter. Paul is writing the Romans, and um, he talks in this whole chapter. Chapter 12 is such a great chapter, and I know I've become more aware of the, the scriptures after the gifts. We've taught for many years on spiritual gifts and helping people understand what their ministry gifts are. But in addition to really knowing your gifts, which again, I want to strongly encourage you, take some time, identify your gifts, because God has gifted you. Uh, Romans 4, 1 through 10 tells us, uh, excuse me, Romans 4, verse 10. I'm sorry, I don't know, I'm giving you the wrong scriptures. 1 Peter 4, verse 10. Got it. First Peter 4, verse 10, talks about how every one of us have received spiritual gifts. It's not like, well, some are gifted, some aren't. No, everyone has received a spiritual gift, and we're to use them as we uh, minister to one another. So make sure you take some time 
um, connect with some of our team leaders and certainly with Kim Geddes, who was served even with groups, you know, with Tony, that, you know, many of you have a pastoral gifting and you need to be aware of that, that you love people. You want to care for them. You want to pray with them. You want to spend time. Maybe you have a teaching gift and you want to use that in a small group to be a facilitator. So, uh, but the first thing you need to do before you get involved in ministry or serve is, is, Hey, number one, how has God gifted me? Um, that's the spiritual gift. H, where's my heart? And I have a passion to do that. I've got some natural abilities for that. And sometimes personality, introvert, extrovert, introvert, that's a big part of it. And then obviously some of the experiences you've had, good, bad. Many people at GT serve from some of the heartbreaking experiences they've been through. I know for me personally, that's been a big part of my ministry and probably will be in the future that what I've gone through uh, and I've experienced God's grace and help gives me the strength to encourage and to give hope to others. So, uh, man, thanks again for joining us tonight. And uh, however you're going to use this teaching to dig into it personally, individually, or if you're going to have a discussion with a group, uh, be blessed as um, you're doing that tonight. So God bless you and thanks for joining us.